Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Jordan. And I'm Desiree. And uh, we, although we are newbie cruisers, today we're talking all about... videos for you. Oh boy, that's fine. So today <laughs> we are talking all about answering your questions and just having a general conversation. I generally like to say right about now that this is Atticus Live where we drink beer and talk about boats, but I ate something weird. I don't know what it is, and I'm sticking to the uh, sticking to the mineral water, but it's still gonna be a ton of fun. Don't worry, sober Jordan is a good time. And a lot of people ask us where we uh, do these live streams from, and we are borrowing our good friend of ours' uh, room at the. Gosh, I can't speak either. We're borrowing a friend's. Am I? Is my audio still on? Yeah, we're on. Oh. Yeah, we're we're at a friend's room here at Skulls Landing, and of course the video is not working. Eh, so, that's but weird. it's cool. So Skulls Landing Bar, restaurant and bar in East Mujeres. It's our favorite place to hang out, and it happens to be where a lot of our good friends work, and so we're hanging out in his room. Um, and uh, talking to all you guys today. Yep, and we usually kind of have a topic that we talk about and research a little bit beforehand, but today we thought it'd be a lot more fun to just do ask us anything, uh, just do a live question and answer um, kind of format. So if you have any questions for us, let us know. We also brought some questions from other uh, people who couldn't join us tonight, so we'll just be going through questions, having some fun tonight. Yeah, totally. So get get your brains working, you know yep. what I mean? Make sure you start coming up with interesting <laughs> stuff. And just in general, we want to have a conversation today. Yeah. Um, but boy, we got a lot of people already. We got Senator Perry. What's going on, buddy? Salty Fingers. Tommy. What's up, buddy? Sailing SV Sunday. Hola, amigo. Hey. And uh, a whole bunch of other guys. So thanks for uh, hopping on. Tom McFarlane. What's up? Chicken patty fries. <laughs> nice to see you guys. And also, we've got Dave tonight as our moderator to help us get through all these questions. So, thank you, Dave. You're amazing. Here's Dave. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave, and I'm delighted once again to be the moderator on tonight's live stream from Project Abacus. I live here in the Republic of Ireland, where I'm currently engaged in a small boat rebuilding project of my own. Now, tonight's live stream is going to be informative, entertaining. Hell, it may even get controversial. But one thing's for certain. It's going to be engaging, and a big part of what makes that happen is your participation. So thank you all for coming on board with Project Atticus. Make sure you give a thumbs up on the live stream because it helps the channel grow. It's just down there, under the screen. Okay? Down there. You're the man, Dave. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. Yeah. What I, do you think, bud? I like this uh, Salty Fingers question. He said, I would like to hear your thoughts on comfort. Comfort is defined in your boat triangle concept, and comfort defined as when a boat is underway in heavy weather. So I guess we've actually been thinking more and more about Atticus, because we get the question a lot, if you could go back and do it again, would you buy such a small boat? Um, and uh, we have our low moments, but overall we're really, really happy with Atticus. We actually entered into a sailing race um, around Isla Mujeres randomly like a week and a half ago, and we were expecting to come in last place and just like be terrible. Um, and it's an amateur race, um, but it was actually really cool because because Atticus is so small and nimble, we were actually able to tack really quickly and we ended up coming in first place. And so that was a really nice reminder for us to just uh, remember how cool it is that we have everything we need in this small teeny space and we get to uh, maneuver around beautiful places just as much as huge, huge boats. Um, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but more to the question, unless, do you, were you going to go on more with that? Boat? No, you got it. Well, yeah, so that is a good point, Salty Fingers. He says, comfort is defined in your boat triangle concept, which I'm stoked that you, you like that. And uh, comfort defined is when a boat is underway in heavy weather. Um, I mean, I would almost add, like, to me, there's three different types of comfort. There's comfort when you're at anchor or at, at at a dock there is comfort when you're simply underway in average weather and then there's comfort when you're underway in heavy weather heavy weather to me is is tough right like that has so much to do with displacement like the general weight of the boat and the length in a lot of ways um so for that i you know um i i'd say mostly what we've been learning a lot about lately is the combination of comfort um, at anchor and comfort just underway in normal conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the hard top that we built lately has been a huge improvement. Yeah. Um, you know, just being able to get out of the sun when we're underway. To us, 
let me put it this way. I think comfort when underway, I almost define it as how much does your boat make you want to go sailing? You know what I mean? If, if you're super exposed, if the ride is really uncomfortable, and if you just don't have uh, like good ventilation down below, um, there's so many factors that could add up to making your boat not fun to sail and not fun yeah. to go on, out on a passage. Mm -hmm. um, it, are we still happy with the size of our boat? I, well, like Desiree was saying, I think over time we were like, visiting other people's boats and and going on bigger boats and kind of forgetting why we got Atticus in the first place mm -hmm. and then winning this little race that we competed in um, there's only like seven boats but all of them were bigger than Atticus and uh, we were just more nimble and we were you know we were just able to handle the boat better um, in in a variety of different situations mm -hmm. and Be do a bunch of sail changes pretty quickly right because Atticus is in a lot of ways designed more for the the sailing aspect rather than the comfort at anchor or mm -hmm. comfort at mm -hmm. a dock mm -hmm. so and then as far as like comfort like living comfort it was also really gratifying because we had two uh random guests they they, they volunteered to be crew but none of the other boats wanted them so we're like yeah you can come in atticus and it was really cool to be able to like have cushions uh, and have you know i i put a couple of cold tonic waters in the fridge and um, I just put bungees around everything recently to get us ready for a next sailing step. So our interior is like super, super organized and everything we need, uh, it, everything we uh, need, we have. And most of the things that we own, we use at least once a week. So um, it's Well, just, that's pretty much a rule for us, yeah. right? If we don't <laughs> use something in like six months, it's just, it's, it's gotta gone. go. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we joke about that because Jordan has this one jean jacket um, that uh, I'm trying to get rid of because it takes up a lot of space. I also have like a fur jacket. It's that a huge the, fur jacket. The next cold friend that comes through, I'm going to show you guys. This thing is so awesome. It's yeah. so badass. <laughs> and I won't let her get rid of it. So, so there's some, that you got to draw the he line. He gets it out and touches it and is like, I, I touched it this week. Yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, and I'm sure Dave, uh, I'm sure Desiree and you are talking a lot, but we're getting a lot of comments. So please, let, let us know what you think we're missing and, that, and what we should touch on. Thanks for all the questions. We're going to try and get to them all. Yeah, guys. and keep on asking them over and over again because uh, it's it's harder than it looks to read and talk at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, question from... Well, first of all, I'm sorry. A couple yeah. people have mentioned the hair. And uh, <laughs> yes, I did change my haircut. It, this is my summer look, but don't you worry. It's going to get long again. I'll do something <laughs> ridiculous with it. So. Yeah, and, and a question one of our users had on Facebook was, um, what's up with your guys' timeline? It seems like, you know, are you married yet? Are you, where are you in terms of your videos? And we're about six to eight months ahead of our videos. So uh, our next video that we'll, we'll be releasing next week for, was from about six months ago. So in those videos, we aren't married yet. Um, and we're not getting ready to start cruising again. We're still saving up money to be able to start cruising again. So now we've been in Isla Mujeres for about a year and a little and change, um, just working on sewing jobs, social media work. Jordan's been doing fiberglass jobs and painting jobs. So um, with all that money we saved in the up summer. and then spent <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> I don't know how I've managed to do this, but every summer for the last like three or four years, I've been in a boatyard doing fiberglass projects. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. It's not what I wanted at all, but oh. Yeah. So I, I like a lot of you guys have seen the um, the extension project, the beginning of it. That Aww. turned out really good. I can't wait to show you guys that. Thanks, Bob. You're awesome. Bob Yendo. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Um, thank you very much. Um, all right. So uh, wh what was the question that you were going to get to? Um, or do you... Navari Q asked... Um, what is your grand sailing plan? How long do you think it will be before you can slash will circumnavigate the globe? Um, well, I, I'd start off by saying I'd like to think that our circumnavigation has already begun. <laughs> it's just it's very we've been slow. going very, very slow. Um, <laughs> you know, I, we our initial plan was to like try to sail to Panama, go through the canal, and then go across the Pacific. But I started realizing that we really could use like not just a shakedown sale, but like a shakedown season. And so we've actually pretty much committed 
to staying in the Caribbean for the next year plus. Um, I'd like to, you know, cross the Pacific, uh, you know, late March, early April, you know, get start leaving for that. Um, so we're not going to do that this uh, year. It'll be the next. 2020. Yes, I, I believe so. Um, so, and we were inspired by, you know, Lynn and Larry Party, as they always inspire so many people. You know, they kind of did that in um, the Sea of Cortez. Like, they sailed around there for a long time um, for, I believe, about a year, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if not a little less. I'm sure one of you guys could correct me on that. But so we just decided, boy, we've got so much to learn, and we could get, we could really, like, hone in our skills and our abilities um, over the course of the next year cruising the Caribbean. Yeah, and personally, I have a very strong goal to uh, just kind of become a, septi a second captain on Atticus. Um, mo I'm not a very good sailor. I, I know the basics of sailing, um, but I realized recently um, a couple of times when I was left on the boat by myself in kind of sticky situations, mostly with like uh, people dragging in the anchorage um, or dealing with big squalls, um, I just realized I depend way too much on Jordan. Um, and so I would like to personally spend this next year just becoming a badass captain. So uh, that's kind of our personal goal as a couple. And I've started off with anchoring. So um, I've kind of mastered dropping the anchor, figuring how much scope we need out, um, putting the snubber on, knowing or before that knowing when to power set knowing how to power set and putting the snubber on um and then just making sure we're not dragging so um it sounds easy but um just trying to remember it every time so that it becomes second nature is kind of what i'm working on so once i uh, my goal is to kind of figure out what i don't know anything about and just tackle that so little yeah. by little my goal is to before we cross the pacific just become like super super competent yeah in fact well, I think it was the parties, again, they had a chapter called, like, Teach Your Wife, It'll Save Your Life, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, uh, but, it, so we've taken that very seriously. Yeah, Mike Ragsdale, Thanks, cheers. Mike. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so, yeah, but with Desiree's training, a lot of what has made that possible, too, is I've become comfortable enough with Atticus so that I can... I mean, I don't know if you, any of you all have experience teaching someone how to sail or anything, really. You have to be pretty darn confident in what you're doing to, to take the time to teach while it's all happening. Because you've got to be able to think in your head, okay, the next thing she's going to have to do is this. I need to tell her that like mm -hmm. 10 seconds before at mm -hmm. least. Um, so I'm finally at that point where I'm good enough at docking, anchoring, sailing Atticus where I can, I can do that with her. So like she was saying, basically the goal is going to be anytime we're doing anything, we're gonna ask ourselves what part of this activity, what part of this task is Desiree, you know, not have much experience at, and then she's gonna do that part of it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so. And then Dave just sent me a really good question, um, kind of along these lines. Mike asked, um, What's Mike the Ragsdale asks, oh, yeah. along with comfort, right. have you seen your relationship become stronger as the time goes along? Um, and I would say yes. Like, we've we've figured out, um, it just seems like we're in a constant <laughs> learning experience with the boat and with each other. Um, and things, things between us get bad when things on the boat are really stressful. So we're trying to learn how to deal with that. <laughs> um, and it's a lot about communication. For me, I get really defensive. So for me, when, when Jordan is like scolding me for doing something wrong, um, I've had to learn to just kind of take it and then uh, not explain, kind of like excuse my actions because I want him to know why I'm doing something. Um, but it is kind of just like a, I, I don't want to think I'm, I'm stupid, but he's like, I don't think you're stupid. I just want you to know how to do it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and then, I, so to add to that, Mike, Tom McFarlane says, do you guys ever annoy the crap out of each yes. other? I'm oh single gosh, again. Yes. I'm single again <laughs> because I'm easily annoyed in a small space. Yeah. And so from my end, that's the problem there is that I'm, I have a difficult time like keeping my cool and everything, trying to teach her. So, I mean, we're both in a less than ideal situation to maintain our patience mm -hmm. and to, you know, and so I guess the way that we've been growing is basically recognizing like how 
each other tends to deal poorly yeah. with a situation and then trying to uh, to create systems that allow us to get through that really mm -hmm. and, and it's just one of those trial by fire things so I, I I don't know that living in a small space makes you a better couple. Living in a small space will tell you right away <laughs> if like if this just isn't going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's probably the best way to put that. Yeah. But um, a couple of people that asking first of all, a couple real quick questions. Mm -hmm. Where's Kika and Dan? Well, they're they're in Florida. They're gone. We had such a good time with them. We spent what like a month hanging out with mm -hmm, them mm -hmm. and it was just a blast mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. especially just getting to hang out with people that have been through so many of similar experiences you know as yourself mm -hmm. um, so that's where they're at um, a couple mm -hmm. of people are asking about um, kids mm. oh and I'm sorry a real quick question someone's asking why we're so behind on our videos mm. and it's literally I, there are not enough hours in the day for me to edit enough of these videos mm -hmm. so we're well, gosh, okay. So we're heading to Belize from here, from Isla Mujeres. We're gonna head down to Belize and then we're gonna spend like the main part of hurricane season in Guatemala. Um, just because we were planning on going to Cuba and just cruising through hurricane season. Then I started looking up like historical tracks going through Cuba and I'm just like, man, that country gets nailed. Mm -hmm. Whereas I looked at like Belize and early in the season, June, July, there's not there's generally not many hurricanes that go through there early in the season mm -hmm. and then we can make it to Guatemala by like August. And with Cuba there are a lot of other limitations and we do want to go back there and spend our Caribbean season explore starting off by exploring Cuba but the internet's not great you need cash um, which we're kind of low on um, and just like the ease of provisioning and getting water was really difficult the last time we were there so yeah. we were like you know what let's just do the easy thing and go yeah. to Belize and Guatemala. <laughs> and, and the internet is huge, right? So yeah. we are six months behind on our videos. If we were to go to Cuba, it'd be even harder to yeah. catch up. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to go check out Belize. I'm really excited. If you guys have not heard of these areas, I'm really excited about the atolls that are offshore of Belize. Mm -hmm. So particularly Turn F, um, because it's got great protection. And then also Glover's Reef and, uh, and Lighthouse Reef. Check those out, look at those pictures. Mm -hmm. They are like insanely beautiful and the snorkeling is just off the chain. Mm -hmm. And we've got a new camera that has an underwater housing, so we're gonna be getting sweet mm -hmm. snorkel shots and everything. So that's what we're really looking forward to. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the, again, the only thing keeping us here from leaving like tomorrow, well, right now as we speak, there's a potential tropical system forming mm -hmm. kind of near Nicaragua. Once that goes by, the only thing holding us back is cutting a couple of episodes and having them scheduled mm -hmm. to be released. So if you're wondering why we're so behind, it is purely because um, between trying to make money, doing boat projects and maintenance, and editing, we, we just don't have enough time. So we're, yeah. I'm hoping that in Guatemala, I'll be able to just like bang out a bunch of episodes and we'll and we'll get a little bit closer to current yeah pretty much our year and change here has been characterized by you know figuring out a, a job to get money pursue that job kind of like we did like a nine to five and then we take um sundays off and then i would like kind of clean the boat and do boat projects on saturdays so uh and then once we got really really burnt out on projects um, then we'd take a couple days off to go to Tulum or explore inland. So and that, try and create some content, yeah. Well, and also and, just stay sane. <laughs> right. And for anybody that is curious about like a lot of the work we were doing, we try to show as much as we could, but it, as you could imagine, it is hard to film when you're legitimately working. You know, you can't... You, the, a lot of the stuff we do on our own time, we can film it, we can take our time, and it doesn't matter if it takes up a lot of time. With a lot of these jobs, I couldn't just stop and set up camera angles all day long. So mm -hmm. I, uh, we we're, we uh, we got a lot of footage, and we're, we got as we're showing as much as we possibly could. So just bear, bear that in mind. But we love that you guys are into the the extension project and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're really excited to show more of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then Dave sent me a bunch of questions, so I'm going to go through those real quick. Great. Uh, Bill Dias asks, how often do you sail naked? Um, and we're actually the opposite of 
naked when we're sailing because we don't have very much shade or sun protection on board so we look like mummies like we're fully covered head to toe pretty much generally <laughs> yeah and there's just too much science on skin cancer and stuff like that um and you know now they're starting to say sunscreen causes cancer I, i'm not convinced on that but supposedly there's a handful of decent studies that are showing that mm -hmm. so regardless we just We've spent too much of our lives in the sun. Yeah. You know, the last 10 years I've been working in the sun. And so I just, it's just not a joke, you mm -hmm. know. I've got to, I've got to stay out of it when I can. That said, we, we do swim naked mm -hmm. generally, like at when, night. when, either at night or if we're in an isolated anchorage, yeah, just yeah. so that we can, you know, not like get our swimsuits <laughs> wet like five times a day and they never end up drying so. yeah yeah <laughs> do you want to answer the kids thing uh what was the question There's, a couple of people were asking if we we're gonna have kids soon oh well um jordan's a little bit more baby crazy than i am right now um <laughs> i kind of feel like you know we pushed so hard in key west to try to actually go cruising and then we got to isla mujeres and we're super super lucky that we got work here um, and it's been an amazing year, and uh, Steve Wicht was asking if he thinks we'll miss it here. And yes, I know we will. It's one of those places where after a year, you don't even realize it, but it's become home. And you know, walking down the street, you recognize at least one, at least one or two people everywhere you go. So it's it's like it's very very sweet place. Um, but anyways. Uh, despite all of that, it still feels like we haven't actually started cruising. So somebody was asking about how long is it going to take for our circumnavigation, and at this rate, it's going to take us like 12 years. <laughs> so I, I personally would like to just travel like a lot, um, at least for, hopefully for a year, uh, where I don't have to carry something that weighs, uh, you know. 15 to 20 pounds with me all yeah, the time. <laughs> yeah, it, that really is what it comes down to. I think we both like the idea of, of starting a family on Atticus and then eventually, hopefully, moving that family onto a slightly larger boat at some point. Um, but we both just, we, we realize that we haven't gotten the enjoyment out of Atticus yet that's comparable to the work we've put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, the episodes are a little deceiving because we really kind of show a lot of the fun stuff and then the hard stuff, it's like a 10 second montage. Mm -hmm. But realistically, <laughs> if you add up the amount of time that we've been having fun on Atticus and compare that to the amount of time we've been working on Atticus, it that's probably like maybe 20%. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like two out of 10 of every day that we've spent on the boat has been actually fun. Yeah, and so, I, I know it's unreasonable to think that you, like anyone sh can just like travel all the time carefree, and that's not what I want. I just want to cruise. Yeah, and like cruising a solid is difficult. season of cruising. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we're sticking in the Caribbean. Is like we just know that we can have a good time and we can really explore. We can get better at sailing, and we could probably you know cruise for quite a while without having to stop. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's our plan right now. Yeah. And uh, cheers to chicken patty fries. Yes. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. You guys rock. <laughs> you guys awesome. are all super awesome. Cool. And then uh, uh, 10B Bremer uh -huh. says, I hear that there are few pirates in the Caribbean, mm. so maybe you should consider piracy as a source of income <laughs> since there would be little competition. Just saying. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. Although uh, we are trying to start the hashtag shower pirates, so we definitely are shower pirates. Yes. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, SV Brilliant Cut asks, how would you describe Isla as a sailing destination to spend some time discovering versus other areas of the Caribbean? Good question. That's a good question. Um, I would say uh, Isla Mujeres uh, as like a stopover is amazing. Like every the people are friendly. It's really cheap. Um and it's a quaint little island, um, but unless you're in, you can only like s uh, snorkel and eat and drink <laughs> um, a, like a certain amount before you kind of go crazy. So I love the slow pace of Isla, um, but I, I, I think like maybe a week or two is probably an appropriate amount of time to spend in Isla. Um, and then Isla is a really cool place also to check out the rest of the Yucatan if you wanted to do inland trips. There's, have you, if you've seen our videos, the, the cenotes are beautiful and the ruins are awesome. Um, and then we've spent a little of time uh, exploring the Yucatan coast, which is pretty cool. And there are some really like neat little quaint villages that we've seen. 
Um, so, what, anything to add? Yeah, so at, as a sailing destination, I was really surprised at how few, like, day sail destinations from here that there are. Yeah. I said that a little weird, but like, you know, a lot of places, if you if you go to Key West, mm -hmm. like you can hop around and go to the Dry Tortugas, check out the other keys. Mm -hmm. If you come here, you basically can go to Holbosch to the north, or you could go to like one of the marinas to the south, mm -hmm. like Aventuras mm -hmm. or El Cid, mm -hmm. um, or you could go to Cozumel. All of those are a, a pain yeah. because you've got the Yucatan current just running right up against this coastline. So all the way up to like sometimes 200 yards off the coast, you can be looking at like two, two and a half, maybe even three knots of current. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on how fast your boat can go, that can be really significant. Um, so that's the one you know issue with this area for a sailor mm -hmm. is there's just not a lot to like say, okay, we'll check out Eastman Harris and we'll kind of hop around and use it as a home base. That doesn't work as well. But what it works really well for is using it as a home base, like Desiree said, to explore the, the mainland, mm -hmm. to explore the Yucatan Peninsula. Because there is so much cool stuff here between the ruins and the cenotes and cool tiny little towns, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean. And, and like sailing to Bahia de Ascension was uh, kind of a tough sail. Um, and it's not considered like a big sailing spot, so there weren't any other sailing sailboats when we were there because it's all just this flat area. Um, but it's it's well known for like flats fishermen. They do a lot of bonefish and tarpon fishing over there. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that, we were the only boat in the whole anchorage, so that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a untouched coast. And we have a friend on Aegis Adventures. Um, he's uh, we met him a couple weeks ago. And he's just spent the last two years sailing around the Yucatan coast. Um, and he says, like, there are so many places that nobody knows about. So there are cool places. And the benefit is that there's not going to be another sailboat anywhere around yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be difficult because you'll have to actually talk to locals or yeah. get some kind of information and waypoints right. to figure out how to navigate it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so true. Like, I shouldn't speak too much about how there's not many places to go. The, the, the thing is, is if you're coming here thinking that it's going to be like the Bahamas or the BVI or something where you can just hop around, it's it's really not like that. And we've seen a lot of people just show up and be like, oh, I didn't realize. Like even it, the, the most popular uh, cruising guidebook here is by uh, Cheryl Rauscher. Mm -hmm. No, her first name is not Cheryl. Her last name is Rauscher, something Rauscher. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, she, it's a little outdated. She describes Isla Contoy, which is just a few miles north of Isla Mujeres, as this wonderful place to go stay for a weekend. Well, now that's all a national park, and, and you can't even stay the night there. So it's just there, and like the snorkeling, most of this area is national park. So if you're going to snorkel, like in the Ascension video we did, mm -hmm. you have to wear a life jacket, which is just a as a boater is a huge bummer right mm -hmm. if if you if you're not snorkeling all the time whatever but if you are a boater and you and you snorkel a lot it's a real bummer so just keep that in mind mm -hmm. but the island is great but again like Desiree said you know there's only so long that you can you know go to the bar and drink beer and and uh, well it depends it depends on what kind there, of cruising you there like. are some people who like doing that all the yeah. time <laughs> all right so we got a couple well, cheers yeah. to do Thanks, we got Bill. Pharisees Oh, thanks. thank you, thank, that. thank you, Pharisees. Nice. We got Bill Connolly. Thank thanks, you, buddy. Bill. You're the man. Whoa, we got, got uh, 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 we got Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Bass. Bass. Thank Aaron. you, Aaron. That's You're awesome. awesome. Wow. And then SC1212 Abel. Oh, thank you. Wow. Rock on. Thank you, guys. You guys. Are awesome. And then Hugh Van Doon. Dean. Dine. Dine. <laughs> says, "Are y'all glad you bought a catch instead of a single mass sailboat?" Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> should I should I start talking about that? Yeah, but don't go on too long. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> Hugh. I I've got to keep this short because I'll ramble. Basically, <laughs> I I think catches are great rigs, um, but I think that with the advent of solar, and like solar being as cheap as it is. I think the catch is at a huge disadvantage. Um, so basically, like we just can't put up that much solar on Atticus because there's hardly anywhere on the boat that isn't getting covered by a boom or a sail. Whereas if I were to, our next boat, I can almost guarantee is gonna be a cutter. Um, 
A, because it's a, it's better to windward, and that and I do like that. You know, like we are interested in sailing to windward when we have to, um, and because um, you know, especially with roller furlings now, it gives you a whole lot of versatility and ease of changing sails from the cockpit. And then on top of that, you can build a nice solar array mm -hmm. aft of the main boom and integrate that into your Bimini and Dodger system. And to me, that's just like, whoa, if you can produce, I mean, look at Uma. Like Uma's got these two massive panels that they got back there. And he said that they're like topped up, no mm -hmm. matter what they do, they're topped up on electricity by 11 in the morning yeah. every day. Yeah, that's How great. How great would that yeah. be? Especially for us because we're starting to edit and stuff on the boat, our, our electricity demands are getting higher and higher. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so that's my really brief two cents on, on, on why I'd like a cutter for our next boat. If it weren't for the solar issue, then I think I would like a catch still because of just the redundancy in the rig, mm -hmm. you know? Like if you're gonna be going offshore and into some hairy situations, it's really it's really nice to know that all that load is getting dispersed over more than, than one spar. Mm -hmm. So uh, Speaking of spars, Salty Fingers asked, did you fix your mizzen step? Um, and we actually decided, we just drilled a hole in the top of the crack, um, and we decided to just keep an eye on it and monitor it. Um, and have a plan B in case we need to, the only, the only thing that's attached to our mizzen mast right now that's kind of really, really important is our, you know, called the traveler. The, the main sheet, the main sheet attaches to a point on the mizzen mast. Yes. So we'll have to figure out in case, in case, worst case scenario, our mizzen mast buckles, we'll have to reattach uh, the main sheet somewhere else. Um, but we've, we've talked to a bunch of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Wood, not wood workers, metal workers. <laughs> oh, we've talked to a bunch of other sailors and, and yeah, a couple of welders, welders and, yeah. and we called them spar manufacturer. And basically what they were all saying is the base of a mast, it, it does not experience a whole lot of load. It's mostly just compression. And so what we were hearing people base, generally say is if, if that crack were to cause a failure, it would have to get larger and it and it most likely would not get really large instantaneously it would have to grow and so we're just going to keep an eye on it um i know for a fact that the crack is is occurring because of the corrosion inside the mast between the mast and the base and so there's just corrosion in there and it's causing expansion so it's not like we're getting like stress cracking from the flexing of the mast or anything like that mm -hmm. it's simply from that corrosion and in a way that corrosion has, has you know, welded the base to the, the mass, right? Like that corrosion has just made that become one mm -hmm. thing. So I think we're good to go until we get to the Guatemala well, and then we'll, we'll and, probably take care of it there. Or we were talking about waiting till we get to Panama because we heard from our friends that they've got really, really great uh, uh, machine shops down there just because there's so many huge boats that go through there and they've got really high quality work. So mm -hmm. we could do it in yeah. Panama as well. Yeah. Um, Tom, Tom McFarland. Thanks, Tom. You're awesome. Thanks, don't worry. Amigo. We won't spend it on Mike's Harder. Mike's <laughs> I don't, Harder. I don't think they have that here. Well, at least you I wouldn't. You could probably find yeah? it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my drink of choice is any kind of red wine with sparkling water or tonic water. Mm, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so... Jim and uh, Shirley ask, did you have to get inocul inoculations before sailing? Um, and it is smart uh, to learn about the health re health regulations or precautions for each country that you visit. And we do that going to a website called noonsite.com. Um, but we didn't get any um, specific, you know, like malaria or malaria pills or anything like that. We're living on the edge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we, We've been doing it from a country to country basis. So like Desiree is saying, we go to noon site and they'll tell you basically what you should be concerned about there. And we just haven't run into any places that have a real serious issue with anything. Mm -hmm. um, that might happen sometime down the road, um, but the direction that we're going between Belize, Guatemala, Cuba, and then heading east from Cuba, um, I'm not. I'm not sure that there's anything too uh, big of an issue to be concerned about. 
if anybody out there has something else or another opinion on that, I'd be really curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. Yeah. Uh, we've been traveling for a long time, and we have you ever gotten any inoculations? Like when you lived in India? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you lived in India, you did. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, we actually went to see a doctor um, on uh, on the island. She's a um, uh, what do you call it? She's a she's a nurse from the what did I, I always forget the name Red Cross Red Cross Red Cross yeah anyway she started her own practice on Isla not a nurse she's a doctor anyways uh, she gave us about two hours of her time and uh, we actually couldn't afford to do that in the United States before we left so we sat down with her we went through a whole medical kit she prescribed things that were specific to Isla that we might want to uh, consider getting like some. Uh, um, amoeba <laughs> medicine as well as pinworm medication which we both have gotten pinworms like more than once three times here <laughs> so that's uh, something yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways yeah that's that's good no sorry I was just gonna answer a couple of quick questions here um, uh, someone's asking how long did it take to film battle of the channels mm. um, with Uma I'd say that was probably four days yeah, and actually, it took us four days. It would have been three days, but it took us four days because um, we accidentally deleted all of the footage from the last day of, of filming. Somebody deleted it, and we're not going <laughs> to say gonna who. We're not going to say who. Nobody knows. <laughs> but it's, it I'll give you a hint. It, it's one of either Dan, Kika, Desiree, or I. <laughs> one of us, and I'm not going to say who it was. Anyways. The footage got deleted, and so we had to do that all over again. We had to get our extras and uh, for chugging with us, and it was it was kind of it was fun. <laughs> it was like Groundhog's Day. Hey, day. <laughs> my buddy Justin's on board. What's up, bro? Hey, How Justin. you doing? I, I hear you're uh, you're engaged, man. We'll have to catch up. That's that's wild. Um, and also, sailing SV someday says during the versus episode, you mentioned you didn't need an armband because you were residents. Any details on that residency yeah. and how that works? Well, we're not technically residents. I, I can even show you. We, we just have a, a driver's license, right? And we got the driver's license so that we could get, like, cheaper deals on, like, ferry tickets and apparently get into the southernmost point or the Punta Sur without... Mm. I, you can't really see it. Yeah. Anyway, that's... that's yeah, and idea. to get that, we just had to get some blood work um, at the local hospital. And then we had to find... Uh, well, we were actually uh, docked at Skull's Landing at the time, so we just brought in our dock agreement, um, and then they needed a utility bill from the dock. So those are the only three things we needed, um, although it took us like two and a half days for the whole thing to unload because, or unfold because um, Mexican bureaucracy, or we'll just say maybe Isla Mujeren bureaucracy <laughs> is, uh, it's a very long process and a lot of people tell you no and then you ask the same question again and then they give you the real answer. So I've learned to just ask like two or three times, um, even the same person, if you get a no or like if you get a wall. <laughs> yeah, you just say, are you sure? Yeah, or yeah. can you check again for me? And yeah. then they'll be like, oh yeah, here, this is all you need. Right. So. Their first response will be like, oh yeah, we could fit you in in a month. And then you say, are you sure? And then they're like, mm, how about later this afternoon? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, great. That works great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. I did want to do say a real, real quick anecdote. So yeah. my buddy Justin is on in in uh, in Chelsea. Is hey Chelsea, how's it going? Anyway, Justin and I, um, we the my very first cruising experience was me, Justin, and a and a handful of our friends rented a sailboat at, out of um, Catalina. Uh, not Catalina, but out of Los Angeles, right there. I I can't remember the name of the marina. That big marina, Marina del Sol, Marina del Rey. Anyway, and we rented out of there and went to Catalina, and that was a interest. Like we, I, I'm a we're diff, we're different cruisers now than we than I was back then with my friends. But I, I'll never forget looking up on YouTube how to anchor appropriately, like the night before we left, just because I knew how. But I was just like, you know, I want to make sure I do this really well. So I like was watching videos on YouTube. Anyway, good good to see you, Jess, or have you on, man. Yeah. So a good question from Dudley Dudley and M U. Fiberglass work. Do you typically use epoxy for the largest projects or do you use polyester or does it depend on the job? Currently refitting a trawler. Um oh I'm sorry. Can you show that to me? Yep, up here. 
Oh, here. Do you, um, gotcha. Uh, yeah, it, it really does depend on the job, in, in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is a good question. So I, when we were refitting Atticus, I became a, like, epoxy ma maniac. Like, I was just, I did everything with epoxy. And I, that's sort of like a common thing right now. It's, it's like everyone wants to use epoxy for everything. So it's kind of cool because I came to Mexico and started doing work here. And you can't get epoxy, you know, if you tried, or at least it's really hard here. Um, so I did a lot of stuff with polyester. And I've started to realize that polyester is harder and easier to work with. I'll try and make this quick uh, for the people that aren't into the technical stuff as much. But basically, like we built the the hard top with polyester, and what I like about that is the cure time is so fast that I can make a lot in one day, right? If the prep is all done and, and it, the prep isn't an issue, I can glass up a panel and then glass something to that panel and glass something else to that in one day, right? Because it cures, and depending on how hot you're mixing it, it can cure and be ready for more in like an hour or two. Anyway, so with epoxy, you're basically always looking at at like a 24 hour cure time. I mean, even if you use like a faster hardener, it just makes working with it harder and, and, then, and then you have to wait maybe six or eight hours, so then that's gonna be a long work day. Mm -hmm. So epoxy um, is, is a little bit harder to work with because of the cure time. That said, Epoxy can you can use like thinner fiberglass and and that makes for a huge difference because the fiberglass can wrap better around whatever you're glassing and and therefore it's easier to glass and therefore the fairing is going to be easier and that's the big part fairing using polyester especially if you're using like cochinette I'm sorry that's the Mexican word uh, Spanish <laughs> word uh, chop strand mat it's, especially if you're using chop strand mat with your with your polyester, like fairing is gonna be a, a big ordeal. You know, you're gonna need a lot of fairing because the the surface is quite unfair. On the BDI scale, what would you say? On the BDI scale, I would say, you know, epoxy is sort of like a uh, like a black swan. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Best was that. Rob, you're the man, dude. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, so long story short is um, we found that with the really big project, like the extension that we're doing, the epoxy was great because of the working time. We had a much longer working time and we were able to use different types of fiberglass um, so that the surface came out more fair. Um, so those two things co in co in combined made epoxy worth the extra price. If you're doing a smaller project, and, and, and you're fabricating, you're not repairing, but you're fabricating, I think polyester is great because it's super cheap and you can just, once you get good at it, it can be super hectic because it starts getting hot and it's kicking and you're yelling at Desiree like, quick, like mix more, this, like it just goes crazy. So if you can handle the stress and get good and fast at it, polyester is cheap and you can you can accomplish a lot more in, in less time. Okay, in honor of DH, I'm gonna move on to the next question. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mike, <laughs> Mike asked. DH, that's great. <laughs> oh, and also, thank you, David Rogers. That's really awesome. Mm. You're the man. <laughs> next Gracias, question amigo. from way before. We're super behind. So if we haven't answered your question, please, please, please keep asking them. Yes. Mike asks, is making friends or girlfriend possible while cruising the Caribbean? Many 35 age people out there. Big fan of you guys. Thanks for the videos. Um, I would say, you know, I actually haven't met that many um, sailors who are in their mid-30s who are not like with someone you know there's a lot of couples that being said Isa Mujeres is like stock full of single women in their 30s so just they just That's live true. here <laughs> yeah so That's like true. buy a plane ticket or sail to Isa Mujeres and then invite some babes over to your boat because there's a lot here <laughs> yeah I, I feel like you would you would probably have a hard time like starting a relationship because the girls that you'd see here, for instance, mm -hmm. or like the girls that I knew that worked in like St. Martin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like they they weren't like 
necessarily, hey, I'm up for absolutely any sort of life-changing event that, that could possibly happen to me. Mm -hmm. So like if you roll up and get along with somebody and say, would you like to sail around the world on my vessel with me? Like <laughs> they might be a little bit reluctant. So, well, a lot of the times, because if they're living in a cool destination already in their 30s, like, that's because they're just independent and they chose to be there and they're just doing them, you know, they're just living their lives. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as, like, meeting people, we've met, um, we, we've had a great time meeting other cruisers and people who live uh, on the island. Sorry, Robert Jennings says, I'm leaving for Ease Harris yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Buying a plane ticket. No, it's crazy. Like, once you know That's one awesome. single girl in their 30s on the island, they're, like, all friends. Yeah. It's, there's I a mean, lot of them. it's a small island, so a lot means, like, you know, six. That's a lot of really a lot attractive a, a single 30-year-old women yeah. <laughs> mm. who are also really cool. <laughs> mm. Um, next question. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, Sailing SV Someday says, what are your thoughts on merchandise? I would proudly sport an Atticus t-shirt. Am I going to need to make my own? <laughs> and uh, great question. We've actually decided once we get to our $500 per episode uh, goal on Patreon, that's when I'll kind of uh, invest in some uh, hardcore um, Atticus swag. So uh, we're almost there. We're, I think we're... Um, we're, we're, we're very close, maybe like four months away. So hopefully you can hold tight. And we'll definitely have on our Facebook page like um, so, like polls on what kind of designs you guys like. And Jordan uh, spends time doodling and doing cool designs. So we have a lot of ideas up our sleeves. We're just trying to uh, get to that goal before we pull the trigger. Boy, if, if you guys have any ideas oh, or yeah. designs, that would be awesome too. Like send us ideas. And, and if you've got the time, like if you could send designs because we're just open... I, I love the idea of just we, we really want to like make t-shirts and hats and stuff that are like that are like interesting that don't just say you know project atticus and that's it so huh. yeah but for those of you who ordered the suck through the pain t-shirts and i saw a couple people talking about them thank you we hope you like them <laughs> it's been so fun because a lot of our friends on the island and especially here at skulls landing you know they all helped out with the filming so we gave them t-shirts and it's been fun to see them wearing them walking around the island. Yeah. In fact, when we were when we were in the middle of the race the other week, the kid that was uh, putting it all together, oh, yeah. he's 12 years old. Yeah. A crazy story. Henry. We'll have him in the episode when we talk about that. But he's he's in the committee boat, <laughs> zooming by, <laughs> taking pictures, and he sees us and he's like, "Suck through the pain." And, and we're, we're like, like "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Cool. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, Ex Machina asks, on the verge on the verge of retirement, living in the north, but I spent my youth sailing in the Bahamas. Do you th do you suggest this as a prudent endeavor at age sixty? Um, and I would say there are plenty of cruisers that we've met uh, sixty and above um, who 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 do a great job of just staying active. Uh, Captain John who Jordan has been working with in a lot of our episodes. He's 70, I believe. He's 70. And he's spry. He, like, jumps around and, like, picks super heavy things up. And he's just well super fit. <laughs> and, and I think a part of that is because of his lifestyle. I mean, right. a lot of it is because of he has to be the nature of his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so, no, I think that has a lot to do with the boat you choose. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert here, but, like, from what I've seen, some boats are easier to handle than others. Just period, right? You, our boat is super hard to handle. We don't have any furled sails, right? So you need to have someone on the foredeck, on the main, to do any sort of change whatsoever. Whereas if you had like a boat, if you had just a sloop with like a furled head sail on like a, or like even a cutter with two furled head sails on like a self, and the inner one is on a self-tacking boom or something, you could you could get a boat that would be pretty darn like physically simple to to sail. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't think that I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Mm -hmm. I think that all it all all it takes for you to get in a good situation is a lot of research, mm -hmm. because you could end up with a boat that would be physically demanding, mm -hmm. um, that would that you know that wouldn't be suited for for your purposes. Mm -hmm. So just spend a lot of time researching and looking for the right boat, and that's that's all. Yeah, and, and that, I think that's it. And our kind of philosophy on finding the right boat has a lot to do with 
kind of finding the smallest boat you think you could be happy on because the amount of money that you save and have left over for fun on the side will really go a lot towards adding to the comfort and happiness of your life. So we see a lot of people who uh, maybe are retired and they buy this huge boat because they're excited that they can afford something so like, you know, a big cat or something. Um, but then they spend a lot of time trying to figure out how it works and doing a lot of projects and they're kind of intimidated by it because it is so big. And so they never end up really sailing or moving or going anywhere. So, um, you know, my suggestion, if it's your first time uh, owning a boat, uh, sounds like you said you did a lot of cruising in the Bahamas, but um, if, you're, if it's your first time living aboard a boat, I would say go small, figure out what you like and then sell it and then buy your ideal boat, you know, after that. You know, work out the kinks first. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, uh, well, first of all, there was, um, gosh, oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there, Rod says BDI shirt is a must have. <laughs> That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Um, but uh, we'll probably not print many. <laughs> oh, and, and Dave says good. everybody drags sometime T-shirt. That's yeah, true. <laughs> uh -huh. And then somebody was saying uh, sailors. Sailors get blown offshore. Where where is that? Ooh. Darn it! I, I just lost it, and that, I thought that was really funny. Um, anyway, um, but I did want to say mention um, uh, Daniel Watts is saying, "Do you sometimes just think, why the hell are we doing this?" <laughs> That's like it seems like such a simple question, but it's a really good question. Like mm -hmm. we we get into like. Uh, uh, ruts a lot of the yeah. time and and it comes down to the fact that I think the lifestyle kind of like what we we're saying about you know a relationship on a small boat um, in a small space even on, in a moderately sized boat you're making a lot of sacrifices for the lifestyle on top of those sacrifices such as like no air conditioning you know um, no like hot water uh, not a lot of personal space, mm -hmm. not a lot of storage space for like hobby mm -hmm. like equipment, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, if you've got a huge catamaran, that's one thing, but a smaller uh, boat, that's just not an option. So anyway, you're making a lot of sacrifices. Then on top of that, like at any moment, something terrible can go wrong on the boat and it'll just boom, like there goes your plans, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like. Oh, that's cute. You thought you were gonna have a good time with this boat, like, or, or oh, you've worked a year to save up all this money. Well, you're gonna actually have to buy this and this and this now because it all broke. Yeah. Like, so that it, the lifestyle can be very frustrating. And if you can't like focus on the positives, you can get really wrapped up in the negatives, you know. And and I would say personally, most of the time, I'm happy with Atticus. It's when there are problems between us that I start thinking like, why am I doing this? Because if Atticus is like acting up in some way, I can be like, well, like this is unfortunate, but we're two buds dealing with it together. Um, but if Atticus is acting up and Jordan and I are not on good ter terms, then I'm like, why am I doing this? Things can get pretty dark pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, so I think it's, you know, if you do live on a small boat, it is important to try to maintain the relationship first because that's kind of the foundation, at least for me, that's where my happiness resides. Like, if this is okay, then I can deal with anything else in the world. But the moment that this relationship starts getting a little crazy, then I doubt everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we, we get to that point all the time yeah. where we're just like, boy. And we were talking about this just the other day that like it's f trying to focus on the positives I mean, yeah, some days we're just like sweaty and hot and like we have to do a job like, gosh, I, you know, I was trying to deal with our overheating issue the other day. We were underway, engine overheated. I go down below, mm. there's all this wake and so we're just rolling and I'm down in the like bowels of the engine bay. I'm just like, what? Why are we doing this again? <laughs> But then, like that night, you know, like we said, like sometimes we swim naked at night if it's if it's nighttime. Like we go swim at night, like the stars are above us and we're just floating there. And I was telling Desiree, I'm like, you know, like at the end of the day, like this experience that we're having right now, like floating, just this like dark 
like massive body of water around us, the stars, the moon, like this is like, this is a life changing experience if you've never done it before, you know? Mm -hmm. And the fact that we've done it, you know, somewhere around a handful of, a couple hundred times now, like you start to forget like mm -hmm. how special that is. Mm -hmm. So it, that's the trick with it is you gotta focus on why you're making the sacrifices that you're making, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. and one thing that helps me remember that is like having um, family and friends come visit and then seeing, sorry, just move the screen, uh, and then seeing them interact with Atticus for the first time and like seeing them interact with their life for the first time and get excited about things, you know, or just like holding the tiller, you know? So trying to figure out ways to make it, remind yourself how freaking, or remind ourselves how freaking lucky we really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Captain Seven Seas asks, so where are the where are you going after Belize? Back to work where you were or on or onto other locales? And what concern do you have staying in hurricane prone area? So essentially we decided to go down to Belize, then go to uh, Guatemala and just kind of wait out hurricane hurricane season in the Rio Dulce. Um, and there are some projects that we need to get done. There's a canvas guy who I learned about on Untie the Lines. Uh, Niki became friends with him. And I personally, I'm really excited to be able to meet a canvas person um, and like get to look at their space and maybe become friends with them. And then maybe he will let me spend some time in his shop and make some stuff for Atticus. I have all my materials. I just like having like a cool sewing spot. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then after that, we are, somebody was asking if they're thinking of, if we're ever thinking about coming to Roatan, Honduras. And actually after the Rio Dulce, um, we're gonna shoot up to the Bay Islands. Um, and actually, for those of you who might know this, my mom is from Honduras. So um, I've been to Roatan many times uh, when I was younger and we're gonna have a little family reunion over there, which will be fun. They're from the mainland um, Honduras, but they're all gonna take the ferry up. And then we're gonna hit Cuba again. And then from that point on, we're just gonna explore the Caribbean and then make our way back down to Panama so that we can cross in 2020. So that's kind of our plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And just to elaborate a little bit, you know, uh, that the viewer was asking, what was their name? Uh, which one? It, the question you were just responding to. She can look up. So anyway, I just wanted to add to that, that um, we do, we are aware that it is hurricane season right now. Um, but the, the, if you look statistically and at the, at the, you know, NOAA's historical, you know, uh, images that they have, um, June and July is not a very dangerous time for, uh, like Belize and, and Guatemala. June and July, they just, generally for a hurricane to make it to Belize, they have to be barreling from the east so they just have to be going straight west this time of year they're forming down more near Nicaragua and so for them to get to Belize from there they have to cross like the Mosquito Coast and that kills them and then they get to Belize and they only have a little bit of time over water before they're over land again um, and so that's just one of the reasons why historically this time of year Belize isn't as big of an issue, whereas Cuba can be a big problem because those hurricanes forming right there off of Nicaragua, they can just shoot straight north and just, and just they cross Cuba all the time this time of year. So that's why we decided that, and if you, also if you look at it, August, September, October, that's when like 80 to 90% of all hurricanes actually occur in the Caribbean. Um, so realistically, June and July is hurricane season, but it's the marginal part of the season. And then on top of that, as we start to get closer to August, like late July, our plan is to kind of hang out around Placencia in, in roughly southern Belize, where you're, a, you're basically 36 hours from being you know, inside the Rio. You're about a day sail from the mouth of the Rio, or an overnight sail, you know, 50 miles. So if we could basically hang out in Placencia and just see if things start to get hairy and we'd always have that, you know, we could pull that ejection cord and, and in 36 hours be with inside the Rio. Mm -hmm. Some other really good questions. Mitch says, do you guys worry about safety in international waters and do you carry an EPIRB AIS? Uh, and do you worry about modern day pirates? And we actually did a live stream about 
uh, the dangers at sea. Um, it's called something like, is cruising that is, dangerous? How dangerous is it to cruise? Or yeah, cruise? and I'm holding machete coming at the camera. Yeah, you can't so, miss it. Yeah, check that out to answer that question. But yes, uh, we do worry about pirates, but there are a lot of resources out there like Noon Sight. Um, Delos has a really good presentation about um, th ways that they avoid piracy. One of them that I thought, two, two tactics that they use that I haven't heard anywhere else is one is they read that or they realize that whenever they've been targeted for theft at night, um, it's always at night and it's always when they're in a new anchorage on the second or third day. So they try not to stay in any new anchorage where there is uh, reports of piracy for more than two nights. Um, and then they always have a night watch. So um, those are two things that we could do if we are ever concerned about um, a, an area with a lot of piracy or mm -hmm. just avoid it completely. That's more ideal. Yeah. Oh, oh did the boy. Inner uh, uh, I think we're still live. Um, yeah, sorry guys, the power just went out. How are we live? It <laughs> might have killed a breaker. That's so the uh, Wi-Fi is still good. Anyway, um, I think I think we're good to go. You might have been connected to the wrong thing. That's guys, crazy. let us know if we're still live, but I'm, yeah. I'm almost positive that we are. Um, oh yeah, we're still on. Cool. Huh. Well, that's that's very good that's to know. Awesome. It might start getting a little hot in here without the AC, but hey, <laughs> there, we there we go, we're back. And then there was another really good question. Uh, I've been curious about, oh gosh, I just missed it. Something about budget. A. Miller says, oh, hey, A. Miller. He sent us a video about flare guns. He said, I've been hmm. curious about starting a uh, budget in the beginning, planning on selling everything in a year to fund the 15-year dream. Nice. Glad you found interest in demo on flare gun or for self-defense video shared. Hmm. Um, yeah, and I would say, well, Jordan's always said, um, how much does cruising cost as much money as you have? <laughs> um, but uh, we would say, uh, if it's your first boat and you want to cruise, buy a boat that's as small as you can deal with. Um, and then something that we didn't do when we were uh, in the buying process of Atticus was to look for boats in a higher price range than we actually were willing to pay. So a lot of times people have uh, really nice boats and they're just a burden to them and they wanna get rid of them. So maybe the boat is worth you know, $30,000 um, but they're trying to sell it for, you know, forty five fifty. So if you offer them twenty thousand dollars, then you're making a you're it's a steal. It's like half their asking price. So you were telling me about this. Like you're gonna hurt people's feelings, it's gonna be awkward and uncomfortable, but you might just get a really good deal. And that's something we didn't do with Atticus. Yeah, yeah. Captain Fatty goes into detail about this concept, both in his book Buy Outfit and Sale. I can't remember the name of the boat. Somebody was br mentioning the name, the name of the book, but he also s wrote about it in his latest cruising article, cruising world article. Anyway, um, he talks about this I concept that, like, if if you're on a budget, right, or not even just on a budget, like you're you're looking for a boat that that doesn't have, like, the sort of value that the owner thinks it has, right? Like, so you're looking for a nice boat that's got problems that nobody wants to fix and there's so many boats like that mm -hmm. so it's like yes the asking price is probably like what the boat is worth kind of but if no one wants to fix it because it's a whole bunch of hard work then uh then you can just you know actually find the price that that is fair for you to take that boat out of their hands because a, a boat can be such a a huge cost and just mm -hmm. like a Burden. just a black hole in which all you throw all your money into it to like make it happy yeah. you know yeah we and met. so it, just like I mean this is the end of my concept is that we paid the asking price for Atticus it was really cheap but if I were to do it over again I I would just spend a lot of time looking at the market and find a boat that like you know, they're asking for double what I'd be willing to pay. Yeah. And then just say, okay, like, what about this? And like Captain Fatty said, like, you're not gonna make friends doing that, but you know, you'll find a boat that you're actually at the correct value, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And then as far as once you start cruising, um, we've met people who spend, whose budgets are super, super low. So there's a really cool, like, hippie couple in the Anchorage right now with two kids, um, and they, 
their budget was something like $500 a month on uh, food and expenses, and they just have like a rice and beans diet. Um, so uh, I think it was Dan from UMA, he was saying like, your expenses per month are, you know, factor in like two or $300 for boat maintenance every month, just in case. Um, but then beyond that, uh, figure out how much you need per month to just eat. Uh, and then that'll be your, That's your cost. Your cost. Yeah. 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 So it can be extremely low, mm -hmm. especially if you stay out of like super expensive places. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a good one? I've got a couple. Oh, go for it. Um, well, first of all, there's been a couple of questions. One person was asking what, uh, our, uh, like mm. if we could have one book mm. on board, what would it be? Um, I would probably say uh, the Voyager's Handbook hmm. by um, Beth Leonard. by Beth Leonard, because Beth and it's just a general like almost everything you could imagine from buying a boat to refitting it to cruising, like everything that you could practically imagine. She's got a chapter on it, hmm. and then what's cool about it too is that she goes through each chapter, whether it be buying, refitting, or or cruising. And, and shows what that looks like for three different boats. Three different, like, theoretical, but halfway not theoretical boats. Like, she actually talked to different people. Anyway, shows you what it would look like for a super budget boat, what it would look like for, like, a moderate budget boat, and what it would look like for a high budget boat. Which, to me, is the most helpful thing imaginable because so many people get wrapped up in the way that they did it and think that that's the only way that you can do it. Like, I once read an article where this woman was saying that if you're cruising in the Caribbean, you have to have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And that's absurd. Like, mm -hmm. it's sure nice, mm -hmm. but there's so many people cruising without it. Mm -hmm. So to say you have to is is outlandish. Or hot water. Yeah, and so, and so that's what's nice about the Voyager's Handbook, is she recognizes that, says, okay, like, here's the different ways you could do this, and it's going to cost you vastly different amounts of money. And it, it's just incredible how she breaks it down. So, and then even beyond the costs and everything, like um, going over like just basically everything you can imagine. I'll stop talking about it. But. <laughs> so, um, Bruce just said the most expensive boat is free. Uh, the most expensive boat is a free boat. No, that's actually really Probably. funny. That's true. Don't yeah. ever take a free boat yeah. <laughs> unless it's like family. Well, even then, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's just think. hop into Atticus Chugs real quick. I usually do that in the middle of our segment, but. We're having so much fun that I kept it for now. So we wanted to ba -ba -da, uh, think, or do an Atticus Chug to the comment of the week from SV Contigo. He says, did you guys love Punta Allen? It came through as really cool, quiet, and seemingly very well-kempt, kind of like Jordan's hair. It even had a super nice looking basketball pool basketball court maybe too quiet <laughs> so, awesome cheers sb contigo that's great you're the man yeah. that's that's a great comment that had us anytime i get a positive <laughs> comment about my hair i just like get so pumped i'm like look <laughs> people like my hair yep and then if you haven't been to our facebook page yet check it out we've got a lot of contests and uh polls and things like that so most recently we had a uh atticus id challenge you want to pull that up bud uh sorry yes and uh, so the winner is Robin Benson, and this photo right here on the left. A lot of people thought it was a uh, cuttlefish, but cuttlefish have a little bit fattier bodies. Um, and then there's a couple more differences, but... But if you look on the right, that's a comparison of a cuttlefish... To a squid. To a, was it a Caribbean squid? A uh, juvenile Caribbean reef squid. Juvenile Caribbean reef squid. Yeah, All right. so good shout, Robin. Robin, yeah, nice. good job, buddy. Yeah. And then we also had another photo competition, the Warrior Warface photo competition, and that goes to Sherry and Maricela. They're super cute. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, that is, look at the one on the bottom left, Project so X, cute. that's great. <laughs> that's so awesome. That is awesome. So, so thanks, guys. You Cheers. guys are awesome. You guys all rock. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep, and then Maricela just started her own YouTube channel, and she watched our ba Battle of the Channels, and she wants to do a milk chug with her friends, so yeah, yeah. Well, that was fun. And, uh, you know, I just thought of this, a couple people are talking about the Voyager's Handbook. Mm. We, can, um, we can put a link up sure. in the description on this video after we're done. Yeah. And so that's another way that you can help us out. If you're going to buy that book, mm -hmm. just buy it by clicking the link in the description after this post. 
um, and uh, and then and we get a little bit of a kickback. From that, that would be yeah. awesome. It's something else to check out, and I I'm, I shouldn't talk too much about it, but there's that other book by um, uh, Calder. Um, uh, you know what, I'll put that in the description as well. Yeah, I, I, I won't even go into it. Uh, and then somebody was asking uh, about our nav station. If we could change anything about our nav station, what would we change? Wait, I'm sorry, I gotta interrupt you. Salty Fingers just put it up. Yeah, Boat Owners Mechanical and Electrical Manual by N oh, Nigel Calder. Nice. It's That's both, I like that one, and I really like his other one that is like the Cruiser's Handbook, I believe. And that's sort of like his version of the Voyager's Handbook like Beth, Beth Leonard has. Again, I'm sorry I'm not getting that correct. I will put that up on the, um, the uh, description afterwards. But yeah, N Nigel Calder has some really cool things in his book that, that Beth Leonard doesn't, doesn't do as well on. So mm -hmm. both of them, like basically if I have a question about cruising and what to do, I'll get both those books out and just <laughs> like look up the same concept in both books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway, someone was asking uh, about our nav station. They said, what would you change about your nav station if you could? Um, speaking of that, um, after our um, one of our previous videos about anchoring at night in Cozumel, Nick and Tavish, uh, some of our subscribers, sent us an, a VHF with AIS. So thank you, Nick and Tavish. You guys are awesome. Yes. We're yeah. so excited to use that. That'll help our, us stay safe out there. Yeah. So that's amazing. And that's <laughs> the tough part about outfitting a boat is that there's a million things I'd like to buy. Um, there's a hundred things that we probably should buy <laughs> and there's about five things that we'll be able to buy yeah. <laughs> like sometime in the next year yeah and so this uh, VHF with AIS built in is gonna be a huge improvement for us because generally when we don't have radar or AIS right now so we just use a hand bearing compass and like either at night or during the day when we're underway we're just getting bearings on the vessels around us and if their bearing doesn't change over the course of like 10 minutes, then we assume that we're on a, at least a near collision course and figure out how to how to adjust our course. Mm -hmm. so, so the AIS is gonna make life a whole lot less stressful. Yeah, so the question was about what would we change about our nav station? And our nav station right now is very minimal. Like we have a Garmin chop, chart plotter. Well, and that's not even the nav station. Yeah. The chart plotter is on deck mm -hmm. in the aft part of the cabin top. Mm -hmm. And then our nav station is really, we've got our weather facts, we've got our VHF, and then we have like a barometer and a little temperature weather, reader. So ours is system. very, very minimal. <laughs> and so basically what, what I did was I built a little table that folds up. In fact, there's an Atticus update that talks all about our uh, nav station. I think it's called Interior Improvements. Mm -hmm. um, so you can check that out under like that that long playlist of short videos that we did. Um, anyway, uh, but our, it's basically just a little tiny table that I can fit my laptop on and it folds down to get out of the way because it's literally on top of one of our settees. Um, if I were to do it over again, I would go all either iPad or some sort of Android tablet. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't looked much into the Android tablets and compared them to iPads, but there, it's just they make a better product from the sense of like making a touch screen that is fast that works. And so, to me, the future is going to be just apps that go on those because because the chart plotters are never going to catch up with Apple and and Android and all that. Um, on top of that, then your mobile. Like the, we have an iPad as like a redundant thing that's old, and like I'll I'll go up on the bow and do a bow watch holding the iPad and just like kind of comparing what the chart says with what I'm seeing while Desiree works us into a reef or something. So I mean that's like that's so handy to have, and then to have so instead of buying a chart plotter, buying two iPads, mm -hmm. it's probably still cheaper, and you've got a redundant system. Um, and uh, so the, the only other thing I would consider is maybe, maybe, maybe buying one of those tiny little desktop computers now because they can make them really small, like just a little box. Mm -hmm. And then having a monitor in the boat that's on like one of those pivoting arms so you can see it from just about anywhere inside the boat. Um, that would be kind of cool to use like OpenCPN and other more high-end apps 
you know what I mean, that are starting to come out. So anyway, one of those two options is, is what I would do. And thanks sailing, SV Someday, you're awesome. Thanks SV for always Sunday. being yeah. on our live streams also. <laughs> you guys are awesome. We really appreciate mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. tuning in and your comments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, I didn't know about this. Captain and the Lady, <laughs> good username, says, some decades ago, Belize moved their capital inland because they got tired of rebuilding their capital after hurricanes? I'm sorry. Uh, I was reading a comment. Sorry. Some decades ago, Belize moved, Belize moved their capital inland because they got tired of rebuilding their capital after hurricanes. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, and like I said, like in August and, and in like that, that later part of the season, uh, they get nailed you know mm -hmm. they get nailed mm -hmm. so no i'm not surprised yeah um i was gonna say um shoot i was just looking at something but it looks like i i lost it um oh somebody was saying is it caribbean or caribbean eh. like how do you pronounce it i say caribbean yeah, and I did just want to say, so that it's named after the, the tribe, like the Native American tribe, the Caribs. Hmm. And so if, you know, and that's how the Europeans pronounced their name. I don't know if that's what they called themselves at all. Right, right. So, but all I know is that the original word was Carib. So I, I guess if you wanted to be really specific about it, it'd be Caribbean. 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 Yeah, but <laughs> um, other than that, I don't think. Sailing Dijon asks, "How often do you guys eat off the boat?" Um, and we pretty much in Isla Mujeres, it's super super cheap uh, in some places uh, to get to eat out. So I pretty much started eating, getting my uh, uh, garlic shrimp once a week, every week on Sunday morning. Um, and it's uh, 95 pesos, which is like $5. Um, other than that, we pretty much cook on Atticus every day. Um, and the, the groceries are fairly cheap here as well. The only issue in Isla Mujeres is just kind of like a restocking of the fruits and vegetables. So like one week, maybe we'll have a lot of zucchini and like kind of nasty carrots, but the next week we'll have beautiful carrots and nothing else. So we kind of just make do with whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, De Desiree is an excellent cook, and she's taught me how to cook. So we, I would go as far as to say that we eat really well. Like, we eat exceptionally well, but it's almost always one of us cooking. Um, so we spend quite a bit of money on, on food. Like, if you could, you could spend way less than mm -hmm. we do. Now, it's groceries, so it's not, like, insanely expensive no matter how you look at it. Mm -hmm. But a, a long time ago, we talked about it and said, okay... If we like treat ourselves in the grocery store, we can save money by not really needing to eat out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we'll treat ourselves by buying steak when it's available, or you know what I mean, like buying just those things that we really like, and and generally having like a a big nice meal almost every evening. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So we eat we eat well just and, on the boat. And that and to me that was one of the big reasons why it was preferable to sail. To travel on a sailboat than to travel backpacking because when we met like it was sort of like a toss of the coin what we were going to do and i wanted to do the sailboat um and and so one of the big benefits of us traveling on a sailboat is you can eat well healthily and well every night mm -hmm. whereas if you're backpacking that's not the case at all you know mm -hmm. so it's one of the big benefits of, of sailing and something that i've changed with our provisioning when we first went to cuba um, I actually filled our refrigerator about halfway with um, meats and poultry um, and pork, and then I'd fill the re the top half of our refrigerator with vegetables that 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 couldn't be stored outside of the refrigerator. And that's like zucchini lasts like two or three days outside of the refrigerator. Carrots last maybe like a week outside of the refrigerator for us. Uh, but anyway, so I've actually changed my tactic for uh, moving forward to um, I'm gonna fill our refrigerator pretty much completely with uh, vegetables um, and then we'll just have canned meats because canned chicken is pretty pretty darn good and uh, easy well, to find. And that's <laughs> when we're cruising in remote places. Yeah, exactly. Not if we have access to a grocery yeah, store. Yeah, if there's a grocery store down the street like we like here in Isla Mujeres, I'll, fill, I'll do my like half and half thing. Right, yeah, because basically, you know, we both realized that if you put both meat and vegetables in the refrigerator, 
you can't have the temperature ideal for both, at least our kind of refrigerator, which is a simple angle drop down refrigerator. Um, you either have it too warm for the meat or too cold for the vegetables. And so that's why we've decided maybe while we're in Cuba for sure, we're just gonna load up on vegetables in the fridge and then we can eat canned, canned meat. Yeah, and if any of you guys out there, oh, thank you, Captain Fish, Captain you're Fish, awesome. you the man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. If any of you out there are really good at, um, know a lot about pickling and uh, canning uh, and then drying like fish and meat, please let me know because I'm on my process of learning that. I also met a woman in Anchorage who grows her own um, herbs. So I might start doing that soon as well. And our, our goal is to get as off the grid as we can. So I'm just kind of slowly taking steps that direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Go ahead. Um, also, if you guys have any tips on like how to store things dry, right? Like how to store vegetables and other things without refrigeration, like just tips. Because what we've learned is there's just like, that there is so much to learn in yeah. regards to how to keep veg different types of vegetables. Yeah. And we do, I, I'm tempted, okay. You somebody asked about what what book you want on the boat, and for me it's different because I'm in charge of the interior. So the boat galley has an amazing is an amazing resource for all of these questions. So mm. if you read that cover to cover, you're pretty much ready to stock your your boat with enough food for like six months if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm always up for learning. So so gray man says, do you dive for your meals? And we do when we can, basically. Mm -hmm. I love spearfishing as, as a hobby, as a sport, and as, like, you know, you could argue that it's a pretty sustainable way to eat, you know? Um, you don't see, uh, you don't see blue striped grunt, you know, fillets in the supermarket, mm -hmm. but there are thousands of blue striped grunt all over the world and they're not hurting, you know what I mean? and they're delicious. <laughs> yeah, they fit right in our pan. <laughs> yeah, so so to me, like, I, I'm a big fan of spear fishing um, and fishing in general. Yeah, in, um, in Isla Mujeres, pretty much all of the reefs are protected, so where you, all the reefs where it would be comfortable to spear fish. Where, it would, where it's protected. Or convenient, yeah, they're all protected, so. They're we, protected when they're protected from the weather. Oh, Does right. that make sense? Yeah. The, the west side of the island is all, you can't, fish there yeah the east side of the island you can but it would be kind of a mission for us to get over there with little shit yeah It'd be a little so mild. anyways we we haven't actually eaten much fish in the last year i did go into cancun a while ago and our we use a taxi driver um the same taxi driver every time and he kind of knows the ins and outs of all the boat supply uh the woodworking the welders the Dornillo, the screw places, not screw places, that sounds wrong, <laughs> places where you can buy uh, bolts and nuts and screws. Um, so anyways, he um, showed me where he went to buy fish and I bought like accidentally enough fish for like a week. <laughs> so we that was pretty much the only fish we've eaten on Isla Mujeres because we haven't been able to catch any, but we mm -hmm. do love doing that. So anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We had a lot of fun. Um, if you've enjoyed tonight's live stream, please give us a thumbs up. That goes a long way and really helps us out. And if you don't want to miss another uh, live stream in the future, you can go ahead and text Atticus to 43506. Um, and I'm pretty sure that only works in the United States and Canada. So if you're international, you'll just have to check out our YouTube community tab or our Facebook group. Yeah, and as I, I like to just mention with this whole text thing, you won't receive any spam. Like this is just 100% we pay for this service. So you won't be, Charged it, it won't be a bummer for you in any way. You literally will just receive a message how long before we go live? 15 minutes. About 15 minutes before we go live. So yeah. it's a nice thing to do if you guys are enjoying these live streams. Yep. Um, also, many, many apologies for all of the questions that we didn't get to, yeah. guys. <laughs> We're, um, if you have any like big questions, send them to us. Yeah, or post them down below and we'll get to them there. And, and we'll get to them on another live stream. Um, also, if you guys haven't checked out our Facebook, Definitely check it out because that's where we do a whole lot more interaction, you know what I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't been over to our Facebook page, definitely mm -hmm. check it out. Mm -hmm. And special thanks to our patrons. We've got a ton uh, of new patrons this week you uh, or this month. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. If you're interested in kind of a behind-the-scenes peek into what we do every single day, um, check out our Patreon um, page. 
Uh, and then we have a Patreon only group where we do polls and kind of, um, you know, spew our guts out and let you guys know <laughs> how we're feeling day to day and what what things we're struggling with. <laughs> and literally what we try and do on there is actually bring a lot of our decision making process like out in the open and, and we, we love feedback. Yeah, from, from it really, people. really helps. Like, yeah, anyways. So, and also a special thanks to Dave tonight for moderating. Dave, you're amazing. He's been with us for instance, since our very first live stream and I do not know what we would do without you. So Dave, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and Dave has his own YouTube channel. So check that out. He's refitting his own sailboat um, over in Ireland. So um, yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, and somebody had commented saying that Dave has a beautiful voice and that he, he should does. be a singer. He, he does. Yeah. Dave, you have a be beautiful Sing voice. Sing us a song, Dave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and make sure to check out this uh, next week's episode. I think we're going to be in Koba exploring some ruins. Yeah, we're going to finish up in Tulum and Koba before we get back to Isla Mujeres and get back to the get grind. Back to work. La yeah. Chamba. That's how they say it in Isla Mujeres. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, this has been a great time, and we will uh, we'll catch you on the flip side, hopefully from Belize. <laughs> Thanks, buds. <laughs> yeah, but you are welcome, bud. And uh, I just found out that um, they they do have decent uh, data packages in Belize, oh, so sweet. we will be on the line yeah. after we leave Mexico. So, okay, guys, have a good one. Take care.